Hey everyone, we're working on a Seagate drive today. Uh, what's going on here is that I received this drive from a local client and uh, if we have a look at the label of this device, you see that we got a serial number 5XW136J1. On the side of the drive right here on this label also has exact same serial number. All right, that's how you can verify that the uh, chassis is the same as the uh, lid of the drive. These are the two spots where the serial number can be found. We are facing a little bit of a problem here because <laughs> that's not the uh, uh, that's not the board, at least that's not the ROM uh, from this device. How did we came to that conclusion? Well, I'll show you. So I have my PC3000 portable uh, with me here today. On Seagate SATA drives, we have power connector, we got SATA connector, and then there is another port right here. This port is for the terminal connection. The terminal is something that comes with a PC3000 and it looks like this, and it has a bunch of different adapters uh, for the tip. Different drives use different types of uh, connection, uh, this one specifically is for Seagate. So I slide that in there and uh, we connect the device to the machine. Once it's connected, we can control the device's power operation through PC3000. So let's swoop over to the utility and power on the device. And we have no spin up. Okay, this is a perfect time to suggest something for the longest time i've been work working with these viha uh, screwdrivers they're amazing and they got the uh, spinning top so that it's really easy to work with one hand um, and usually i do not favor anything that uh, snaps in to the screwdriver but i picked up this set basically it's the same kind of um, feel viha driver only this thing is uh, more like a rubberized material, so it, 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 for the grip it feels much better because the other one is just hard plastic. This thing is also feels more ergonomic in your hand. And uh, you have all of these um, bits that you can use. I don't like removable bit screwdrivers because it's very easy to lose them, but it comes with this nice case, very easy to take things out and put them back in. And then it just goes back on the magnet and waits there until the next uh, time it needs to be used. So I honestly think that this is uh, an amazing solution for those who are working with hard drives. It's a great precision um, tool and uh, extremely high quality. Like I couldn't, I couldn't be more impressed. So it's all I've been using ever since for screwing things up <laughs> and unscrewing things up. So. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, put a link to this uh, tool in the description guys. This is a really cool thing. I mean uh, In my laminar flow bench I still use all of these drivers just because I already had them and been buying them for a long time But I'm thinking about uh, clearing out some space and making it nice and um, Pretty again, so I'm gonna just pick up another set of these we have um, swappable bits and uh, Have that for the shop the best part about it is the grip handle and how it feels in your hand. Because when you're working with drives, sometimes you do need a bigger um, type of leverage handle. Something that I've been using uh, by Vija is this soft finish. And the soft finish handle feels exactly like this. You get more grip with it. I still would use a um, big handle like that um, for something that requires a lot of torque. If you're working on a three and a half inch drive, and you're torquing down the spindle, for example, that would be um, a good place to uh, uh, to use something bigger like that. But for everything else, this is my go-to. This board is uh, most likely fried um, because we're not getting any spin-up on our device. And let's have a look at what's going on here. Mm. Ooh, yeah, this is, this is a five volt line and it's really crispy. 
there, you don't need to be an expert to know that this is damaged. Visual inspection will tell you what's up. So let's uh, let's go ahead and fix this board first. So first, I'm gonna check out the uh, these two TVS diodes. So you have a red probe and the black probe. Black probe goes where that line is to test the diode. This is supposed to produce one short beep. And it does. So this, this one is good. This one looks a lot more cooked. And there's some sort of residue here. Makes me wonder. Ooh! We got a winner, guys. Well, this thing is fried. We put our uh, multimeter in the uh, um, ohms mode and we measure out these resistors. So this one is displaying 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and we got one kilo ohm here. Apply a little bit of flux here. This one is going to be cooked up nicely. Um, so I'm going to use hot tweezers to pull it. I have a short video on this channel uh, showing that you can actually just uh, cut this um, TVS diode right out. You could, technically, but we're not going to do that. I mean, if you didn't have the tools to do it the right way, <laughs> obviously you could technically do it, but I have everything we need here to get this done, how we're going to get it done. So right now, we've uh, probably solved the problem with the TVS diode. I'm not going to be replacing it as this is just for data recovery and I'm not intending to use this device for uh, forever, right? We just need to clone it once and the data gets transferred to a new device. So right now I'm still in the um, a diode test mode. So if we have a problem with this TVS diode, it's still going to produce this noise. And it does. So the TVS diode here is shot. We can actually get rid of it. What we need to make sure over here that we do not have that beeping noise between those two parts and we don't so we restored the circuit on this part but we still have an issue with uh, this resistor showing too much resistance it's uh, it's not what we're looking for we need to lower that number down so um, how can that be done well that can be done by several methods you can either find another board like this one, for example, and uh, remove that component and swap it out. For the demonstration purposes of this video, let's just uh, use a piece of wire. So um, the wire I'm going to use is right here. We're just going to jump this resistor because this is zero ohm resistor. So there is no resistance that should be there, okay? There. So now when we test it in the ohms mode, what are the readings? This one is reading 0 0.5. This one is reading 0 0.5. This one is reading 0 0.5. And this one is reading 0 0.5. Fixed. So power up this device on its own. So if we go into um, this section, and we're gonna read it via, via uh, boot code. I'm gonna go and increase the speed to 300, switch this to zero, and say read. Okay, so now it's gonna try to tell us we need to initialize uh, the boot code. It's gonna say okay, and we're waiting for the reading. All right, so right now through the terminal, the, the utility is going to extract information from the ROM. Once that part is obtained, we can 
uh, run some commands. Sure, let's create, oh, we need to. Um, let's call it test board. All right, so this is the original ROM. If we go into hit ID here, we get information from uh, whatever is written in here that can give us some clues. This uh, serial number is 9VP170RP. If we look at the label of our device, our device's serial number starts with 5XW. It's not the correct ROM. And disconnect power. This board, even though we've brought it to, to work, is never gonna work for us because it's, uh, it contains a wrong chip. The chip that's on there isn't what we're looking for. This is the drive that was used as a donor. And uh, that, well, that's the uh, serial number that's on there. So let's just hope that this is the board that we're looking for. And this is the board that the customer's ROM is on. And uh, we're gonna hook up the terminal. So it could have been some freaky accident where <laughs> a ROM from one drive ended up on the wrong unit. This happens. That's why it's super important to mark everything. And when you're reading, when, when you're working with ROMs, uh, it's best to use not the transfer solution where you actually remove the component and move it over, but to use the terminal way to work with it. Because then you, first of all, you're not overheating the drive, you're not putting it through any sort of stress, but also you're reading data uh, that's inside of these uh, chips that is unique and uh, tools like PC3000, they're intelligent enough to understand um, what that uh, board is from, create an appropriate uh, profile for it. So everything will kind of be very hard to not organize, you know, so it's a lot of uh, that problem is solved for you there. This chip that's on the board that we just fixed belongs to this drive and I'm hoping that we're going to see a serial number that matches our patient. I'm looking at the chip and I, I can see that it's been worked on because uh, underneath there is a little bit of um, flux residue, not a lot, but it's just probably like yeah, right there. Now that I see that the board that the patient's drive came with matches up one of the donors, I, I know for, for sure that something got switched around. But do we have all the missing parts or not? So let's uh, connect the device just the board by itself and fire up the unit okay it comes ready i'm gonna go into uh, utility start the utility tools work with flash rom boot code 300 zero right here hit okay So once this reads, we're going to run the ID command and find out what uh, serial number we have. And look at this. This is the board we are in need of. There it is. 5XW136J1. And one for the spindle. There, the spin up starts. Yeah, we have a bad preamp, but at least we have uh, located our original board. Now what we need to do is uh, replace the head assembly on it in order to uh, get access to this data. In order to confirm that our preamp is defective, uh, we can uh, just set the multimeter into resistance mode and uh, you put uh, one end of the probe into uh, the ground on the drive 
and uh, you look at the readings. So pay attention to what this display is showing for uh, a working device and this is our patient. So we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, this first row So first two pads are showing 0 0.9. Still very close. Yeah. Very close. Pad 3 here is showing 761 ohms. And here we have 5.4 mega ohms. Definitely a different type of reading on the same pin. So the preamp has to come out, preamp has to be changed. Preamp got fried and uh, as a result the device is clicking even with the PCB repaired.